Enter Bohannon Krieger. Entering the Gilead system via the Straits of Andras was no small feat. With you at his side, Jekyll Veronius had no doubts that his huge feat in space navigation would be a success. And upon entering the Gilead system, it did not take long for the Veronius flotilla to become well established amongst trade, both legitimately and underhandedly. It didn't take long for you to set up as Veronius' right hand man. Your main problem? The left hand man. Danzas Tall, a man who had fallen from grace from his house, had been a constant thorn in your side. Contradicting your advice, bad mouthing you in front of your men, and constantly competing against you for the best jobs. Six months ago, you had the opportunity to rub shoulders with one of the most prolific industrious lords of the Gilead system, a certain Lord Overon, owner of Overon Industries, producer of servitors, servo skulls, weapon parts, and weapons. A man who has influence in Avacarus, Nethrius, and Gilead Prime. A man who owns estates in Ostia and Enoch. A man with seven sons, some of whom are formidable themselves. A man not to be messed with, and a man you needed to impress. The job went awry. Signs point to the suspicion that the intelligence you had received from Danzas was wrong, and the ship you were meant to be seeing to safety, the Glorious Bright, was all but destroyed by a gene stealer menace. They seemingly came out of nowhere. Regardless, Veronius' name was on the line, and you took the dive for it. The only small saving grace was that he allowed you to pick up where you were dumped. But that's where all your hard-earned work, all your respect, and most importantly where all your accumulated cargo and wealth was left. Your respect for Veronius, and his respect for you, remains brotherly. But that tie could not remain public, lest Veronius fall out of favour with the various lords of the Gilead system. Enoch seemed like a place to rebuild from scratch, maybe invest in some kind of terrestrial shipping business and start again from the ground up, quite literally, and upon throwing a knife at a map and landing in Mourncleft, you soon rented a single room from a kind herbalist and began to scope the place for what it's worth and where you yourself could fit in. Who knows, you might even eventually amass enough influence to find out the truth behind the attack on the ship and even get a chance at revenge. Amara, the herbalist who took you in, was surprisingly well known to the locals. Before you knew it, you were begrudgingly off collecting god knows what kind of plant and blasting away the local fauna to get to it. It ended up being lucrative enough, coupled with a fairly low profile with which to avoid the raffle eye of Overon's agents. As time went on, you amassed enough stock and creds with which to begin selling off world, that the ins and outs hadn't presented themselves to you just yet. After a night of successful gambling and drinking in the fisherman's net, the only half decent bar in Mourncleft, you stumbled back to your shared house. Knowing the lights were out and Amara had more than likely gone to sleep already, you decide to do the same and follow into a deep, drunken sleep. In the morning, Amara is nowhere to be seen, and you get dressed for the day, suspecting that she may have simply gone out to get supplies. You're caught off guard by two imposing cultists. They fling you out, claiming that Amara is a living saint and now under their care. These are members of the cult known as the Waterbringers, and as far as you care to know about them, you know that they supply water to the locals when the local water desalination plant breaks down, which is quite regularly. Not meaning to make a show of it and to nurse your hangover, you simply leave for the fisherman's net to figure out what the hell is going on with Amara and how you're going to get your stuff back without making a right fuss. So, tentatively, Callie approaches the, you guys on the, uh, in the cockpit. Uh, so, guys, what's the plan? Well, where do you need dropping off exactly? Are we dropping off you uh, with somebody? Uh, it was, it's a family trip, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm from a backwater planet. Uh, I'm from a backwater village um, on Enoch, actually. It's called Mourncleft. Uh, I grew up there with my sister. Um, if you drop me off there, she'll obviously repay, her, repay the kindness with some medical supplies. Or you're welcome oh. to stay for a bit, if you like. Oh, that's too kind. And uh, if, if you type it into this data slate, would you be able to help our ship navigate there, do you think? Is it somewhere quite easy you could find on the on a planet-wide grid? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's really, it's not hard to miss. It's got a gigantic face carving of Tigranus Delir. Can I do a knowledge check? Do I know Tyrannus Delir? Do yourself a knowledge check, yeah, yeah, go ahead. 
Um, so I don't know which of my skills that would be actually. So it will be. Let me just bring it up. I think. Scholar. Uh, scholar, scholar check. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so there you are. Uh, yeah, you know this to be the. Um... Oh God, what is he? <laughs> Let me find my notes. He is the chapter master of the Absolvers, which is the system's main Space Marine chapter. I believe. Uh, I'm probably going to be corrected in the comments, but I believe they wear they're in all white. They look like white scarves. They're in all white with red heraldry. I'm definitely getting a bit slated in the comments later about that. <laughs> no, they're not. They're blue with green stripes. No, I think they are actually red with white stripes. Yeah. Um, now you guys have actually been to Enoch before. Don't forget, you've been but you've been to a particular sector which contained all the, sh the shrine buildings. And that's where Saint Deportis Sanitarium is. So you guys are well aware that you've got to go back there eventually to pick up Anastasia to figure out what, what the hell is going on. Um, but yeah, she she explains that she's from Mourncleft. Um, it's a it's a sea. It's like a, along some shoreline cliffs, um, and uh, the face of Tigranostelir is carved in the side of it, these these cliffs. Now look, we need to uh, change the colours on this ship uh, and pronto, because of course, well you know how we came to acquire it. Um, would you or your sister know of anyone when we make uh, Planetfall that we could we could go to um, that might be able to help us out like that? Uh, sure, yeah, there's, I mean... It's kind of a scrapper town, so we could rustle up some paint and maybe some bodywork to get to get this looking a bit different to what it is. Um, yeah, we can ask around, surely. I think that'll be a, a, a great idea when we make uh, when we make land to uh, have this look a little different. This ship, of course. Yes, I feel anything that means we won't be sticking out given that possibly half of the Imperium is after us now. Probably is best. Only half? Yes. Um, well, the Inquisition. Um, there were some battle sisters. They were less impressed with our presence. Uh, there is then possibly, um, I believe they are a a house of the Imperium. They uh, are probably going to be slightly upset about us being alive, given that we killed his son. Um, so yes, nondescript would be a good idea. And what about this artifact? Um, we can't just we, we we can't just hand it over. So um, are we going to try and stash it on the planet, or try and keep it on our ship? I'd be more interested to keep it on our ship if we can. If we... You know, just so, so we can research and take a look into it a bit more, you know. We can figure some stuff out about it. It, it might take us quite some time to study this artifact. We've never seen anything quite like it. Yeah, but it's it's an artifact of the, the you know, the, the machine god kind of thing, isn't it? So I'm, I'm kind of tempted just to, you know, figure out what it's about, what it's all like and that kind of thing. You know, I dare say you will, well, but it'll take longer than an afternoon, won't it? So, oh yeah, this is this is a long-term kind of thing. I'm thinking this could be for travels between planets and things like that. But if we have it to hand, any spare minute I get, I can tinker with it, have a little look. Okay, right. Let's uh, let's punch in these coordinates then. I don't think uh, I think we want to make haste in the ship here. Cool. Okay, so you beep, 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 punch in the coordinates and you're on your way. Um, I'll just give you a little bit of a, a, a description of Enoch itself because you've been there before but you haven't, I haven't really described the planet to you so I'll just do that quickly. Um, so yeah, you, you guys have been to Enoch before um, and that's where Anastasia currently is at St. Deportis Sanitarium. Um, so Enoch is the fourth planet in the Gilead system. It's a world of vast oceans and mostly desert land masses. It's a shrine world for the most part, and it's a place where people pilgrim to um, to visit the various shrines and places of worship. 
Um, but when the Great Rift opened up, millions of these pilgrims became stranded here, and now the planet suffers from like shortages of accommodation, of supplies, and like, even fresh water because it's like ocean with desert, so it doesn't really have many many places of fresh water. Uh, because of this, it's like a survival of the fittest scenario, um, and just hundreds of thousands of camps have been set up across the planet, and there's like various gangs and cults have started springing up. And they identify themselves with like subcutaneous crystalline skin plant tattoos, and they're called skin plant mementos. So it's commonplace, and you guys would have this, it would be common knowledge to you guys because you guys have been here for a little while, that if you spot someone with these tattoos, it's normally a sign that they're affiliated with a gang or affiliated with a movement, or um, because they can also relay messages via these, um, these tattoos. And they're really simple. Once they've, once they've been engraved, you can't change the message. So it's normally like, um, like kind of like a signal to someone that's also in their gang. So they they know that they're together, and it'll be like a really simple message, like I don't know, like he stands with us or something, you know, some, something like that, a short line. Um, so yeah, the lander approaches Mornclef just before sunset. Uh, the village is shaped like a large V wrapped in a deep crevasse that parts a set of towering shoreline cliffs. Um, Boats of various sizes hang in the crevasse, well above the churning surface of the ocean, and each are connected by long cables to mechanical winches at the top of the cliff. Um, to the north, a large mountain rises, easily, uh, let's say, it's 3,000 3, metres tall. Um, Fabio, you actually spot, as you're coming down, you spot this, this carving, and it, is, it does actually look quite a lot like Tigranus de Lille. And um, it's, just sort of like, it's just a face looking out to sea. Um, but Mourncliffe itself seems to have less than 50 buildings. Um, it has a, like a curving fortified wall with gun emplacements surrounding the village, and they go all the way to the cliffs. And beyond the village is like a, it's just like a shanty town, and it stretches off towards the horizon. This thing looks insanely huge. Just, just, just lean-tos and tents and prop-ups and clay huts that just go on for the, to the eye can see. Um, but you manage to land the craft off, of, off at a small landing pad near the cliff edge and as, as you land a heavily built older woman wearing an armoured body glove approaches you and she's sort of waving for you to get out of the, the craft. Hi there! There you go, I can see we've landed. What can I help you with? Hello, What's hello. Your... Good day. Yes, I'm, um, I'm Rash Rashida Cantlin. I'm a local enforcer. Uh, what, what brings you here? And then she she actually notices your badge of office and she actually stops herself. She gives you a salute. She's like, sir, sir. Good, good afternoon, Rashida. Yeah, it's uh, we've got some personal business to handle. Nothing official, nothing that would require the recruitment of any of your officers. So I do appreciate the, uh, the offer in advance of, uh, of any help you have, but we're, we're okay. Just some minor personal business to handle uh, today. Right, okay. And then and she looks behind you and she sees Callio. She's like, Callio, is that you? Oh, I'll be damned. You guys better follow me then. Um, I'm going to need to fill you in. And as, as you walk towards the village, um, she's chatting away to Callio and they're catching up on on the general and um, she um, she leads you down through the through the, the marketplace and she, she stops outside a bar called the fisherman's net and she says Kalea there's there's something I need to tell you about your sister um, but there's I think there's someone we need to talk to about this first as well and she leads you all into the bar and um, this bar is filled with like, gruff-looking fishermen, common folk, um, the odd occasional cloaked figure. Um, but for the most part, it's surprisingly quiet. And the drinkers, they seem to be nursing their cups like it's gold. And they're savouring every last drop. And she points over to a rugged guy at the bar. And she goes, I think we need to include him in this chat because this fellow's been staying with your sister for a while now. And she... She walks over with you guys and she sits around the table and the person she's pointing at is Bohannon. She says, this fella here, um, 
you've been staying. You've been staying with Amora, haven't you? I have indeed. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, um, I'm sure he can fill you in, but as far as I'm aware, she's been taken in as a a living saint, which is uh, well. I've known her since she was a tyke, and she's she's no living saint for as far as I know. Can I check? What do we know about uh, living saints? Is it something that it sounds like so very rare that we would never come across it, or is this uh, more common amongst the kind of cults that we've seen in this system than maybe? Absolutely. It's more rare, like so. Ah. So in this system, there there are no living saints. There there hasn't been one announced in a long time. They are an embodiment of the emperor's will. Um, <laughs> They're essentially the 40k holy superhero. Yeah. Essentially, um, Saint Celestine is the most is the most famous one she, who just does not die, she, and she's just been blessed by the emperor. And she's they're like a source of holiness and um, a source of power and um, awe. And it's all it almost seems absurd to you that a backwater town and a bunch of cultists have suddenly declared this woman to be a living saint. It almost seems like, unheard of. But for the most part, everyone here seems to be all right with it, at least, for the moment. Um, and this, this sort of thing would make planet-wide news, wouldn't it? This would be like the most, most, the most, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. most spectacular thing to have happened to anyone in the, in the system, right? Like, yeah, like, I, mean, I mean, this has happened overnight and already the town is talking about it, like, yeah, it's it's like having yeah, it's like having Jesus have the second coming in your village. You know, it like it just just everyone is chatting about it. He, he better not. We've got a we've got a fate in two weeks' time, and <laughs> I don't want that bit. I took the upset. Um, just see people on the rocks. Yeah. Um, this this cult they, they're called the Waterbringers. Um, they're, they're a bit of a zealous bunch, but they, they do do a lot of good around here in their own way. Um, the desalinisation plant nearby is always on the blink, and somehow they manage to supply fresh water to the community. It's the fact that they've taken Amara though, that's what bothers me, because this is not good. And obviously they've kicked this guy out of his house, so... I haven't... I just have not had the time to deal with it. I've had uprisings in the shanty towns, and this is on my to-do list. <laughs> yeah, and Kalia looks really upset about this as well. She's she's obviously asking questions and she's trying to get information out of it. I'm, I'm not going to roleplay two people having a conversation together. Please bear with me. But um, yeah, she's gen genuinely wants to go find her sister. Do you think we can go and see her? Is she? Is is um, this Amora your sister? Is she off limits then? Is she uh, guarded or is she being uh, held in a way that means we can't see her or you can't see her? Uh, can she? Do you know? Can we? Can we get to her? Can we see her? Well, uh, I mean, the cult themselves they they are holed up in a, a local cathedral. Um, I'll tell you what I can do, uh, maybe we can get you rubbing shoulders with the cult and then maybe you can find a way in that way and see what really is going on here. Um, the call for water is actually about to start shortly so why don't we check that out and you can observe them and see what they're all about. Yes, I mean last time we went to a cathedral it didn't go particularly well. <laughs> Does this take place at the plant, or is this by the cathedral, or is the plant and cathedral two separate things? So, it's this is going to get complicated, but there's there's actually two different cults here. There's the water bringers, who are the people that have taken Amara, and then there's the deluge, who are commissioned by the emperor to handle the desalination plant. Um, now, you should recognise these guys by their markings. Um, the guys with the red tattoos are, in fact, the um, the deluge, and the green tattoos 
are, and green and blue are the um, the water bringers. Um, come, let's go see. Let's go check check these guys out. You can scoop, scope them out for yourself and see what you think. Yeah. I suppose we should bring this one with us. Bohannon, was it? Yes, Bohannon Trigger. And I'm not letting you leave without me. I would like my effects back. Ah, effects. Will you actually have some things of yours, this Amora? No, the house that I have been summarily evicted from by these water bringers has all of my effects in it. It's quite unfortunate circumstance. I was uh, in this very establishment not the other night. And I returned home, the lights were out, Amora wasn't about. I woke up in the morning and she still wasn't there. However, I had two cultists from the water bringers tell me that I was desecrating the property as Amora was now a living saint. Which I find very strange because living saints aren't that common. Do you know Amora well? I have spent quite some time with her. Yes, we uh, you know, we did some some training. It's 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 what I do uh, before another great fall. However, this one seems this 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 circumstance I'm in now is a little bit more important to me. Are if we both find Amora and get back into the property, are the people of this planet given to? Uh desperation of wishing there to be a saint? Is it likely it's true? Well, you see, the boy, you're, you're probably asking the wrong man about faith. Of course, praise be the God Emperor, but um, no, my, my time here has been trading off world and spending more of, more of my focus and attention has been away. You could say that. That's my suspicion as well. These people here are very desperate and will do anything to get hope. Any kind of hope. A lot of the folk here, don't forget, are pilgrims that were trapped here from the Great Rift. So <laughs> they're looking for something. Right, well, I best guess we should probably start making our way. Okay, and if you turn to roll 20, you should now have Mourncliffe village in your um, in your sights, and the bottom oh, yeah. of the building is Amara and Bohannon's current establishment, with the herb herb shop on one side and the living quarters on the other. Bottom, bottom. Oh yeah, bottom left. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. So you approach this building, and you can clearly see. Both both doors to this to this establishment are um, currently being held guard by cultists, and you can see you can actually see on their quite visibly on their faces and across their bodies are these blue, purple, and green tattoos, and they're very obvious. Very obvious. How busy is it otherwise around? Is there you know a lot of foot traffic, or is it quite quiet? So at this point, uh, the sun is well and truly setting, so it's quite dark. Um, probably almost about, it's about as dark as it is now outside. And um, there are there are a few people milling about, one or two, not many at all. No, that's fine. Not Just, many at all. You know, before it's like, oh, it's full swing of market. And <laughs> no, um, no, you're, you're, I know what you're, what you're getting at, and you're pretty safe. <laughs> can I approach one of the two? Sure, of course you can. Blessings be upon the uh, living saint. Blessings be. What may I do for you, brother? Um, we were wondering if we could be granted an audience with the saint, if at all possible. Oh no, Saint Amara, bless her. She's she's not residing here anymore. Not in this lowly lowly hovel. Um, we are only here to protect this building as a holy site to be set up in her name. Sanctuary. Uh, she's currently at the um, the, church, the Cathedral of Infinite Flows. Excellent. Is that far from here? We've come on a great pilgrimage from 
from far away hearing news of this saint. Already? Already. Words words quickly when it is powerful. Yes, her glory is powerful. It shines upon us all. Is there any, um, given that you were here, any of the miracles she's performed? Are you able to let us know what they were, what, they, what she's done to be, a bit, be elevated? The rumours and the, the whispers coming out are few and far between, I'm afraid. We want to hear true knowledge from one such as yourself. We dare not bring it to light. You will just have to witness it for yourself and see. And does the water flow in this establishment, in this, the most holy of sights? Blessed be the flush that shall wash away our sins. <laughs> blessed be, brother, blessed be. But of course, where she treads, the water flows. And so here behind you, though it may have been uh, where she slept, what what is it inside that um, should make us come back here and revere this place? What is it inside this property that makes this such a holy site and so special other than the resting place uh, of our saint? Why that itself, of course, brings glory. This building, this will be a shrine to her, dedicated. Pilgrims will come far and wide, I am sure, as you guys yourselves have turned up. Blessed be the basin that washeth and release thy sin from thy body, basin hands. Well, uh, we shall... Blessed be, brother! Blessed be! <clears throat> what a duty you are doing here and upholding. We shall uh, seek the saint of the cathedral of the flows. Uh, would you uh, need relieving at any point? Uh, you may call upon us. A man such as myself of the Imperium would uh, would be only so proud to stand guard at a property like this of our dear saint. I dare say you would, brother, but this is for our, our following only, our inner brothers to duty. Well, do your duty and you will, of course, be rewarded by the flow of the saint. When uh, may we witness the next sermon or prayer of the saint? Will there be one before the sun falls? Why, tomorrow morning at first light there will be one. First light. At the cathedral of the, of the infinite flow. But then we shall be sure to witness. But unfortunately, it's only exclusive to our to our followers. You may, of course, um, remain outside to shout your praises through the windows and doors, but to be inside is most blessed. And what of the man who has uh, spent time living with the uh, the living saint prior to her becoming? A living saint. My effects are on the other side of you, fine gentlemen, and I would like them back. The guy that hasn't been speaking until now eyes you up and down and turns to the other one. It's him. He's a loose end and we're gonna have to get rid of him. And they both draw swords from their cloaks. I whip my pistol out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you graciously. <laughs> <laughs> Rob was waiting for it. <laughs> I, I just want to set where I could have been this entire time. He's Go been ahead. in the back. You should be able to move, you should should all be able to move your characters if you want to move your characters. So feel free to place yourself where you think you were at that particular time and during that conversation. And uh, yeah, get ready to, to fight Great. the first fight. Right up to talking to them, I imagine. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was probably hanging back for these guys. Oh wait, what's this back here? Cool. 
it's in meters again. Uh, so your your movement value is the amount of squares you can move, basically. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, it's, oh, it's just squares, isn't it? Yeah, we're yeah. just doing just squares because that's why it's that simply that way. Uh, right, so I think that you two would act first. So uh, yeah, if you two want to so, want yeah. to act simultaneously, let's do simultaneously. So because I'm wielding a pistol, I can uh, uh, fire in combat. So mm -hmm. I am going to um, take aim and then make a cool shot yep. into the one directly in front of me. Cool, I'm going to use you as an example so that we can teach how, how this so, works. Um, so in the, in the bottom, Al, there's a button called roll. And, and you've got it turned on. Right, hang on. If you go to macros, yeah. uh, which is the, the macros. The three, the three dots and the three lines along the top. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there should be then one called roll, and you can <coughs> show macro quick bar, and then click that button, and then it'll appear in the bottom left. But, 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 but show macro quick bar, bottom left. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Cool. If you click that, when you go to make a roll, just type in your dice pole and dice ball, and the system will do it all for you. So, when you say dice pull, yep. So, for instance, um, if you want to do your yeah, so shot. I get a few bonuses. I get twelve dice to hit anyway because I'm literally built to do one thing as I always do. Um, I then um, am going to make the difficulty of this a bit trickier. Um, pretty much, I'm assuming they're not very well armoured. Um, so I'm going to add four to their defence. Um, Don't worry about the technicalities. We'll work oh, no, no, through it. That's fine. I um, ignore him. He's just going to roll some dice and shoot some people. So I get a 12. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's that's fine, you hit, yeah. Cool. Um, so I deal Jesus 10 Christ. damage plus 5. And this is with your pistol. Yes. Yeah, you just cave the guy's sky. Cool. Oh yeah, it's got rending, hasn't it? Yeah, um, you just... <laughs> It just his head explodes like a watermelon. Like it's a shuriken pistol. Yeah, it just yeah. Cool. And um, I turn to Ichvon in the brief half a second. Your turn. It's uh, Fabio's going. Oh, next. Fabio! Yeah, sorry, he's next to you. Come on, Fabio. Yeah. Simultaneously. Blessed be the will of thine emperor. <laughs> um. Which is a, a running joke amongst us, <laughs> um, especially an inquisitor with the uh, symbol of the emperor. I love that there is. We don't need to bother about neutral, chaotic, or anything like that. Everyone is a real bastard <laughs> in the <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> Um So I've got my master crossed last pistol. I got six to hit dice. So let's see. Uh, let's see what we get. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, it um, matches. Okay, so I do um, 10 plus 1 extra dice, so what do I roll? Do I roll yeah, 11? just roll the extra dice, the 1 extra dice. You do 10 roll damage one. plus the, whatever the extra dice gives you. And in following suit, this guy's head just turns into a watermelon as well. These guys are low rank cultists and they, yeah, you've just blasted them both <laughs> <laughs> as soon as that happens, I go, I run up to him like, fuck, fuck, god damn it. Right. And I'm trying to see whether any of their tattoos over their heads and stuff were salvageable. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, so that, so, all right, you yeah, it's fine. Roll a tech test, roll a tech test. Or a Medicaid test, whichever one you prefer, actually. Heck. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, so you realise that the crystalline structure, once embedded into the skin, is unsalvageable. It's just the nature of the way that they're put in. Um, you can they are removable, but once they've been removed, it destroys too much of what's, what's there to be um, repurposed, if that makes sense. Right, with and there's two no way to like... Unfortunately not. Mm. You could go to a tattoo artist and get one done for yourself, but then obviously that you'd be stuck with that on you. <laughs> right, Ichabon, can you get us in for He's got worse. If you don't mind, gentlemen, we'll uh, make way. Can I uh, walk in and try open the front door? It opens, yeah. Excellent. 
Come in, Jim. Just a quick sidebar. We know these. We know these back door is also guarded as well. Do we want to maybe uh, before they find their, their dead chums over here, take care of those guys? Or hmm. I mean, if, if no one's coming into this building, we may as well drag the dead chums into the living room. Yes, maybe me and Fabio should go take out the yeah. while you two investigate the building. Quite. Yeah, sure, I get my giant mechanical claw and I just pick one up and just start dragging it through the door into the building. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to uh, pull out my sniper rifle. Okay. Uh, holster the uh, other one and come around the corner, and this is going to be horrific. Um, <laughs> so, I will then um, do a multi attack because. I can get away with that now, because, yep. so, um, oh god, <laughs> so first one, <laughs> um, it's within my first range increment, so an 8, yep, cool. it's, it's, it starts at 10, you're looking for 3s, so, yeah, I mean, in terms of damage, it starts as 10, for anything, okay, yep, first one, pop, Cool, and then the second shot is now a five because it's my second yep. attack. And pop. <laughs> <laughs> they both, yeah, yeah, they're, they're dead as well. Cool. <laughs> so I take it, behind and you go inside. You grab your gear. Um, yes. Yeah. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my frustrations on. Uh, the corpse of the two men we brought in. I'm going to string them up in quite a grotesque manner. Sure. And uh, on the wall, in their own blood, write the words, Gaze upon your living saint. Ooh. I'm going to lead, lean into Fabio. God damn it, that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> He's an interesting one. <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> hmm. Gentlemen, the years of trading and uh, diplomacy and trying to maintain a certain image have taught me many things. And it is, do not allow yourself to be messed with. Yes. Um, point heard, point taken. I must thank you kindly. Uh, I'm going to go check. Uh, I'm looking around to see if there's any kind of uh, home security system or anything around this place. There is not. This um, this humble abode is merely just a shop front and um, a living quarters and storage space there for for All right, and bits. Yeah, I make my way to the cashier. <laughs> <laughs> In my oh, house door. You were going to steal Wait, the money out of my house. Really? Think... This is uh, uh, Amara and Bohannon's house. I thought this was the Thane's house. She's <laughs> <laughs> the same. <laughs> you, you were ransacking my house, my good man. At least let me have the good courtesy to open the till for you, dear boy. There's no reason to match the place to be. I own it. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm not going to find what I was looking for anyway, then. I was looking for evidence and some crap, but, yeah. I thought this was their place. No, 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 no. This is, this is my place. This is mine and Amora's abode, and she has been taken... Well, then, I will them. refrain. <laughs> if you'd be so kind. Um, I merely... I am merely trying to use... The fact that are two cults ah, well. in the same place yeah. to our advantage. Uh, yes. Hey, they called you a loose end back there. What do they mean? Well, I'm here. I was living here. This was my house. They have clearly taken her. By those words, it would imply that if she had ascended to living sainthood properly, um, then obviously that would have been a miracle and it would have been true however i do believe by calling me a loose end it would imply that she was taken against her will 
and they suspect that I heard something. However, I can tell you in my inebriated state, I heard nothing at all. <laughs> He's not wrong. So during this conversation, oh. um, Rashida comes back and she looks through the door. Emperor's balls. Did the cultists do this? Looking at the thing on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it would appear that the two cults do not appear to like each other. Right, this is a bigger mess than I originally thought it was. Anyway, they're about to do the... Um... They're about to hand out the water. Do you guys want to come and see these cults in action? I think it might be I would best. love to. Oh yeah, I think so. I want to see what they're up to. Um, maybe... Bearing yeah, I want to see what system they're purifying in or whatever. Maybe saying, bearing in mind, they we could listen from, uh, you know, seeing our crazies in through the windows and doors. Maybe we should see if there is a way we can make egress um, or ingress. Sorry, into that. Well, I mean, we we could either these, we could uh, these either other way. cultists. Um, these other cultists did just destroy their heads. We. Could could possibly use these bits that they have here. Do the robes look covered in blood and viscera, or are they somehow managed to remain clean? They're covered in blood and viscera. <laughs> <laughs> it's an excellent idea, Rickafon, and you do have quite a few good ones, but I think this may give the game away if we turn up in bloody robes. I know there's the bloody rose order, but um, I think it might be a bit too on the nose. Maybe with the cathedral, we could try and sneak in at night and uh, and stay there in order to to witness whatever happens in the morning uh, firsthand, or uh, try and get hold of some sort of tech that'll let us video the whole thing. I feel this uh, cultist has basically given us uh, the ability to just go around and kill them all now. They're clearly up to something of uh, nefarious implication. Uh, carte blanche, as it were. Um, we could uh, roll right through them, I think, from the looks of things. Yeah, maybe, but there's bound to be a uh, someone directly. I don't think we need to discover what it is at all. We'll just blast it. Um, out of curiosity, Rob, what, uh, Rob Luke, sorry. what are the odds of there being an Imperial Knight on this planet? <laughs> I can't tell you that. <laughs> well, you surely would have seen it. <laughs> You don't know, there's, you know, planets around, you only saw one side of it. <laughs> um, well, look, this while we're having this conversation, Rashida's sort of like, please don't go on a killing spree through my town, for the love of God. Please don't. No, that, Whatever, that, whatever's that, happening here, it's giving the people hope. That won't be necessary, my dear. We don't need anyone falling out of hope, even if it leads them to their death. It, even I want I want to find the truth for behind this. I want to get to the bottom. But at the same time, I don't want it exposed to the common people. Yes. If right. that makes sense, I don't want if sudden... If souls are taken by the warp, it's a greater problem in itself. <laughs> <laughs> Look, come with me to the... to the. Um... Let's go to the cathedral, yes. Well, I, I, I can't get you into the cathedral, but I can take you to the town square where they're handing out water. Uh, that's a start. And then maybe... You can. I don't know. I, 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 I honestly, I'm, I'm at a loss. So we will investigate. Let's you. begin there, at least. Yeah. Let's Please. see them handing out water tonight, and we'll think on how we approach the thing. We uh, promise not to commit genocide. Right. Show, let's show us the way then. So she takes you um, through the lean-tos of tents and clay domes of Mornpleft, and as you do, a klaxon sirens in the distance. And eventually, you will make your way out the town to the town square, where a crowd is forming. Uh, several villagers with rough appearances and augmetics incorporating lacquered wood. They all approach, and they're carrying buckets of fish, fish viscera, heads, bones, and like various slightly disturbing tentacle parts. And there are hundreds of people along the wall. There's along this the wall that you can see in the background, and they're looking down, and they're mostly standing in groups as well. Uh, a majority are all dressed in rags, um, and most of them are, are brightly lit up with glowing skin plants. Um, they're all in vibrant colours along their arms and occasionally faces as well. And a wave of pungent odours strikes strikes you guys. 
and the crowd just smells rank, like they are living in the worst conditions. They, some of them are fishermen, so they obviously smell anyway, but some of them are like genuinely filthy. And as you approach, you can see um, the red robes and red um, marks of the um, deluge. And Rashida sort of explains to you, she said, well, the adepts, they all get their water first, and then, well, we try to give what we can to the pilgrims. It's not much, but some, it's something for their pots. And she said, come on, let's go into this building and get on the roof so you can have a better look. So she leads you into this building, and sort of nods to one of the occupants, goes upstairs. This building is just a clay building, a flat roof, very simple. Um, it's been built quickly, just, just four walls and ceiling, essentially. And she gets on the top, and she's like, "There you go. You can see. You can see now. You can see clearly." And um, what you can see is um, there are members of the deluge on one side, and they have tanks and buckets, and they're handing out water to people. These are the guys that um, are in charge of the desalinization plant, and they're you know they're handing water out to people. Um, and uh, let's do an awareness check. If you'd all like to roll awareness check, that'd be a great start. We can get some people rolling some dice. So on the awareness check, it will have just a, a number associated with it. And if you just input that into the roll bar and press enter, it will give you... Ooh. That came out well. <laughs> and Rob. Wow. Okay. We see everything. Yeah. Basically. Oh, about handing it Hell to yeah. Me. Wow, okay. So, um... What you guys see, well, I'm going to have to read out everything that you see now, which is all written there, which is all of them. Um, so you all noticing, you all notice that the crowd is parting, and um, a second group of um, people come over, and these guys are the um, water bringers, and they're just on the outskirts of the group, and they're just sort of watching silently, but they look like they want to, they want to fight with the deluge, essentially, and you can see that they're in, in like. Um, blue robes, like really dark blue, and their um, their skin plants are like blue green, and they shimmer like sun and water. Where the deluge ones are um, like a crimson tinged, and it looks like it's like red and silver, and it looks like um, crimson tinged rain is flowing over their skin. They're really these these um, skin plants are really really vivid and effective. Um, what else do you notice? So. Um, you can see that the deluge, they're, they're, not, they're not like the other shanty folk. Uh, some of them have like um, uh, mechanical augments, um, some of them are servitors. Um, they're not emaciated in any way. They look quite well muscled and relatively healthy. Um, it's clear to you guys, looking at the, these, this group, that they, they could, if they wanted to, they could pose quite a significant combat threat. Um, but basically, Rashida explains, you know, that they own the desalination plant and um, it's been malfunctioning due to faulty parts and overuse. And eventually the water runs out and then the deluge shoo everyone, starts to shoo everyone away. Um, and they do it in a kind of threatening way because obviously this is, there are a lot of desperate people here and they have to be quite forceful about this. Um, and eventually the water bringers, they also did start to disperse as well and the crowd starts to sort of, starts to slowly but she turns to you guys and she says, look, now's your time to talk to these people. Um, if you want to do it, I've got to go and take care of something, but if you guys want to speak to these water bringers or whatever, now's your time to do it. Um, just, I'll, I'll come and find you, or you can come and find me at some point once, once you're done and we can discuss what's happening. And um, she gives you the coordinates to her to her precinct, um, and uh, she wanders off. Wants off to do a thing. They just left on this building, and uh, yeah, the crowd's sort of milling around down, down below you. Okay, um, yeah, I'll go up to one of the um, one of the uh, water bringers. I'll to talk to one of them. Hang on, are we on a roof? Yes. I just want to say, gentlemen, we have an option here where we could, we have a, we have a, an ace in the hole, as it were, with regard to 
the situation back at, at my home. We, we could leave that like a ticking time bomb, as it were, for someone to stumble upon as a changing of a guard, perhaps. Or we could sow a further seed and set the bomb off, as it were. It looks like these deluge chaps are pretty well, uh, pretty well equipped. Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Would you like me to? So wait, what, what, are you, what are you? What are you saying? Just to get these guys around over there. At, at some point, what I'm saying is, at some point, there is going to be a changing of the shift at my house, and the sh the shift change is going to be faced with four very dead colleagues, two of whom are currently strung up with blood smeared all over the walls. That's obviously going to set off a chain of events which could be quite volatile. I mean, yes, they might notice we've been there. Well, yeah. not necessarily us, you say, because... True. They're a different cult. Yes, and they're currently at loggerheads with the other cult in town, which appears to be graced by the God Emperor of Mankind himself. Are you saying that we gather some incriminating evidence and leave it at the, uh, well, your home? I'm saying that there is that potential. We, we, we start a ruckus and allow the problem to violently resolve itself. Meanwhile, we can conduct our investigations into Amara and the rest of it while there's a distraction. I could also, um, using my wonderfully silenced rifle here, I could, you know, graze one of the deluge cultists themselves and Maybe that might set the cat amongst the pigeons. If they can't tell where it came from, they're probably going to blame the water bringers, and we could uh, get them to tear each other from limb from limb without I would to be involved. I would suggest that's a, that that is a potential, but it is quite a risky manoeuvre. This is true. We may find an advantage in offered to uh, in offering to help solve the problem that uh, was caused at uh, your old house. Of course, uh, picking a side, as it were, and offering to help out the water bringers themselves to find who, just who did that to the water bringer guard. I, I would suggest maybe a more subtle approach. I, I do agree with both of you. Something more needs to push this along a bit further. However, my thinking was we go down there, and as we were talking or approaching the water bringers, I would inquire with one of them as to whom I need to talk to I need to, who I need to talk to about gaining access to my property and then make note that there were four cultists guarding it but I have since returned and now there are none yeah I think that'll be good I think that'll be good whilst we're gathering some information of course yeah I think uh, I can certainly go along with that prompt them to go to the property and go sure down and have a word with these uh, these uh, water bringers and see what we can find out whilst we're here yes I think we should probably be careful however given that I don't know whether our new found slightly violent friend here, Bohannon. Maybe it'd be best if you did not come down, given that was what triggered the others earlier. Do you think you're well known by the group? No, those chaps that were at the front door were the ones who turfed me out. Ah, okay. So Correct. it's unlikely that any others will know who you were. Um, no. I, I, to be quite frank with you, the the uh, water bringer cult is my first real introduction to them, apart from hearsay and rumour, was uh, when I was evicted from my home. Excellent. No, I was just making sure before we took you down and, you know, basically took an alarm with us. Yeah, that's the correct assumption to make as well. They, yeah. You haven't brought the shoppers with them before, so, yes. Yes. Should we go, uh, uh, see if we can get any closer to getting into this cathedral? 
Oh, quite so. So oh, first we're going to gather some info, aren't we? We're going to generally talk to the water bringers and then and then and talk about the cathedral within that conversation, maybe. Yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah. Yes, that's that's. Yeah. So what's going on? If I'm just explaining, what's going on in, in Barhannon's mind right now is basically he is livid that a his friend has been taken and he sees it that she's been taken and b he's been kicked out of his home by these four irks that just turned up but because he knew of them and what they represented he was forced to sort of stay his hand um pretty much just out of out of respect for the, for the place um so his intention is fully to start sowing seeds by being quite obvious in his actions, but with a subtle, uh, but with a subtlety to it. So the word that what he's going to be saying to people is going to be quite obvious. He is going to be showing his annoyance, um, but you guys will, you know, you you've seen what's just taken place, so you're you're well, you're well aware of it. But while you're making your uh, inquiries, he would be. He would probably just drag, grab hold of someone else and sow that little seed to them to make it look quite nonchalant. Mm. Good. Um, how far away are we from these cultists currently? Uh, not very. Not too far at all. Um, they're, you're on the building right next to the square, and they're sort of they're just milling about. They're slowly starting to disperse. There's a few like they're still chatting and about mm. to leave. But um, um, yeah, can I do an awareness? Um, using my magnocular scope to see if I can detect any form of concealed weaponry um, because at least if we do end up going down to face them and you know if they all happen to be hiding plasma cannons at least we know. <laughs> you certainly can. Yeah, you can like to do me an awareness test. Uh, another nine. They are more than likely carrying blade weapons. Um, the since the since a lot of the people were left on this planet, um, guns are really scarce. So you can almost guarantee that if anyone, any of these cultists had weapons, they would be bladed. Cool. Or makeshift weapons at best. That's fine. Um, yeah, just uh, Amanel doesn't like going in without as much information as possible. Um, yes. Enough. So it's likely they're armed. So maybe we don't get as close as we did last time, Fabio. Until they draw their sword, and then you can stab them, of course. Yeah, more than happy for just a uh, to take this one a bit more casually. Cool. And you, so you, uh, uh, just so I can mentally prepare myself for the shenanigans you're about to pull. Um, <laughs> you guys are going to, from what I gather from Bahannon's scheme, is that you're going to uh, approach the um, water bringers, kind of tip them off that the deluge had caused the murders in the shrine and then pit the two gangs against each other. Is, is that what your is it, is that was your plan? plan? That's, yeah, Bohan, it's more subtle than that. Right. But that is Bohannon's plan, is he's going, he's seen, he was going to do, that was his idea from the first, first off, mm. but now he's seen that the deluge are apparently stronger than the water bringers yeah that's cool. that's solid solidified in his, in his head as a as a potential plan of action cool. i didn't think think about this and i fucking love it uh, <laughs> okay <laughs> what what was the what was the faction guarding the house which one was that one that was the water bringers so they're the ones in blue okay. and the ones in red are the deluge and they're the ones that own the desalination plant that keeps breaking down that's just it. Okay, what I'll bring us to. Cool. So I take it you're gonna approach well, you tell me what you got what you guys wanna do. I'm gonna stay up on the roof. Okay. With my rifle yeah. drawn just in case. I'm I'm gonna but I haven't would head down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go down with Bohannon and uh, go and chat to them. And uh, I'm on a fact finding mission. I'm going yeah, I'm going to go follow him down, but I'm going to stay like a 
20 feet back or whatever, but just kind of stay amongst groups of people to try to just be supportive, but kind of hidden. Yeah, okay. Uh, and if I can, I'd like to get round in a way where I could maybe uh, not be too far from their water, like the, the things they were dishing out the water from. Mm, yeah, okay, cool. So you're going to kind of scope out, secretly scope out the deluge and see what they're all about. Um, Fabio is going down to do a bit of f- fact checking and to try and get a bit of information. And Mahanan's going to um, subtly, subtly plant the seeds of doubt in the minds of the um, water bringers. Okay, so let's deal with, um, let's do Ikavon first. So, if you'd like to roll me a scholar check and a tech check, I will tell you what these containers are, what they're doing, and who these people are about. Alright, first things first <coughs> is the scholar. Okay, solid. And then the tech. Cool. Okay, so... Um, the, the Deluge themselves, they are a group from the Mechanicus. They're your kind of people. They deal with fixing and repairs. They deal with maintenance. These guys look like they're here for official purpose. They don't look like they've moved in or anything. They look like they're equipped to, to deal with this plant that they've been trying to. Um, the containers that they're using, um, however, aren't standard containers. Um, they They... They're, ma- they're more makeshift. Um, they've tried to piece together some, some tech that's been lying around and things. But they, they seem genuine. They seem like they're genuinely trying to help the populace and hand out water. They're just making the most of what they have, essentially. Um, anything else you'd like to know? Mm-hmm. Um, no, nothing springs to mind. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to kind of loiter around there for a yeah, especially now that I've seen that they're intrigued. Sure. Um, yeah. the, the person that seems to be leading this group, I will tell you this, um, she has a mechadendra just like yourself. But it's not a medical one, it's one built for repairs and maintenance, so it's got a few other tools on it. And yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm going to scope it out for a moment and yeah. then I'll come back. Cool, yeah, uh, Fabio. Um, if you would like to roll me an awareness test, we'll do that, shall we? Yeah, so, got that here. Cool, nice and solid. Um, so, as, as you're sort of, um, sort of milling around, and uh, you, you, there's two old men, and they're two old fishermen, and they're chatting to each other, and one says to the other, it's like, Oh, you don't know, don't know about the deluge. They've been really shit lately. They've constantly been letting us down with the water. I don't know what's going on with that. And the other one sort of grunts. He's like, "Well, you know, we've got the, we've got the the, um, the water bringers now. They've they're not letting us down. It sounds like they've got um, it sounds like this 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 new new um, martyr. She sounds like she's our savior. She's gonna save us. You know, Saint Saint Amara. She'll save us all." She'll, she'll save us all. He's, he's murmuring it. He's, he's kind of a little lost for hope, and he's kind of. This is his last hope, basically. They all look quite impoverished. Um, yeah, that, that, that's that's what you get from that conversation. That's the only thing you really hear that stands out to you. The, the mention of her name, and, and you know, it sounds like the people are starting to really uh, believe in this saint and find hope in this saint. And, uh, Bohannon, if you'd like to roll me a cunning test to make sure this goes down well. And a deception as well, please. Because you are going to technically do a little bit of a lie. Cool. Solid. That was the cunning. Yep. Okay. And then a deception check as well, please. Brilliant. So as you can see, you've got a red, you've got a red um, dice there. That's your wrath die. That means you've yep. had a critical success, essentially. That's oh, okay. Means. So 
It doesn't always mean it's an auto-pass on something, it just means that something really good narratively happens. Okay. So yeah. let me know what you're going to do, let me know what you're going to say, and yeah, approach the approach, um, person. Um, can we just do that out of character first, or just do it all as Bohannon? Uh, up to you, whatever you're comfortable with, mate. If you want to do it as Bohannon, that's brilliant. But, oh, yeah. yeah that's cool. So as we're walking down, I'll just... Um, Excuse me, you, yes, uh, you, water bringer fellow, what, what, what is it you do around here? Oh, praise, praise the Emperor, praise oh, Saint Amara, and I uh, bring the water to the populace. It's uh, one of the most sacred and honourable duties this planet has to offer. Yes, I, 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 I see, I saw the, I saw the whole uh, furore a, a little while ago. Um, who do I speak to about gaining access to my home. You see, the living Saint Amara, bless her, she was living with me. We, we had a small business. Uh, and now I was told this morning that um, by cultists of the Waterborn, uh, sorry, the Waterbringers, that I was no longer allowed to uh, enter my home because it is, of course, a uh, sanctuary because, you know, Blessed Amara used to live there. Unfortunately, I've been thinking about this and I would like to get some of my personal effects and perhaps one of the cultists who was securing the property may be able to help me, but I returned not so long ago and I find no one there. Who, who would I have to speak to about this? As luck may have it, this cultist is new. He's <laughs> quite young, quite enthusiastic. And he's he's taken aback by awe that you might have been living with the living saint. Oh, my blessed brother, this is fortuitous news. Of course, of, of course, of course, anything, anything. You need yes. to speak to Tybalt. He's the guy, you'll find him outside of the cathedral of the infinite flows. He'll sort you out, I'm sure he will. Blessed be, brother, blessed be. What a before, blessed evening. Blessed be to you. But before you go, could you please uh, provide a spelling for the name? I, I do like to be proper about these things. Oh, well, I didn't learn to, to write or read, you see. Well, could you just say it to me? Type out. Uh, right, uh, what tie what? T-Y-B-A-L-T. T Y B A L T. Yeah. Oh, Tybalt, sorry, I do apologise. No, I'm no, not... nothing to apologise, sir. Nothing, nothing. Blessed be. Blessed be. Thank you. Outside the cathedral of the infinite flow. That sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's not something you want, is it? <laughs> yeah, that's just not, yeah. You can tell the lot of blokes wrote this. <laughs> I didn't think about that one. Um, and I assume, uh, Fabio, would you, do you want to speak to anybody? I, all I can uh, grasp from these people around here is that they, uh, they're desperate. And, uh, and no one really seems so far to so so recent has this as your friend been canonized that they uh, there's scant details of what what they've said or, or about what's really happened. I think uh, I think we really do need to delve deeper on this one to find did, your friend. Oh, did you say? Did you hear anything? I wasn't really paying too much. Too busy trying to identify the the, the poor chap that I've just spoken to. Ah, uh, yes, uh, the. Um, what I heard was that the deluge have been letting letting down the people, unreliable, and uh, not really holding up their side of the bargain. And then these uh, water bearers, water bringers, sweep in and seem to have convinced people that they uh, they're going to save the day. Not sure quite how they've done it yet. Yes, quite. Um, would I? Would I have heard any of the conversation that Fabio heard? I wouldn't have, would I? No, not really. No. 
Right, so I suggest we round up the other two gents and we, uh, if you wouldn't mind, proceed and talk to this Tybalt fellow. Yeah, they'll, uh, they'll catch up, I'm sure. We can, um, I'll sit, because they're on top of the roof, aren't they? Um, yes. Yeah. Still. So I can just signal to them with, uh, you know, and then this way, and they can follow at a distance if they'd like. It'll be uh, better. Better we go through the crowds. Uh, we, we don't go as a. Gr we don't don't all follow one another, especially with uh, some of these imperial planets. You know how it is. <laughs> so let's uh, let's head over. Let's 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 go to uh, your pal. Sure. Spoken like a true imperial citizen. Yeah. Just open heresy. Um, whilst <laughs> I was to the whilst I'm close to Makanas, something I want to do as just kind of add, um like the the discord that we're showing between these two factions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, sure. Because because they're mechanics, they're they're yeah, sure. they're like heavily or they're like cyborgs kind of things as well. So yeah. Free chatter talent. Yeah, you're, yeah. To almost the community. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you want to you want to use your uh, binary um, to. So I want to like. I think you need the mic closer. Yeah. To the so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Is, is so I kind of, guy. I kind of want to. As, yeah, as I'm as I'm there, I'm, I, I imagine I'm sort of in the crowd, in a bit of a crowd around people. But I want to kind of home in on one um, member of um, the deluge or whatever. Yeah. And I want to kind of like. And say, um, I've forgotten. What is it? What are they called? The water givers? What's the, what's the, the water, yeah, the water bringers. Yeah, that's right. Water bringers. Yeah. I, I want to kind of bring him, say, water opinion against you. Okay. Uh, just to like one of the. So one Mutiny of the need to follow. Evidence. Okay. Um, so you see, yeah. you see, you see one of the servitors um, light up, and um, he turns to the woman who seems to be in charge of this procession, and you can see that sort of she, he's obviously chattering something to her, but you can't quite make it out because of the distance. And she looks around, and they start to walk quicker away from the scene. They just start moving away. Um, clearly they don't want any kind of conflicts. Yeah. Although they look like they could probably take a good fight, they're, they're not in, they don't want to be involved in this. And they start walking away, but she's, she's looking around, like, consciously, like, she, she obviously got the, re the message relayed back to her. Um, also, I know, I know we, we, we skimmed over this, but I, I would imagine you guys were caught kind of, uh, when you spoke to the cultists, I imagine you're also implanting, saying that, you know, the deluge of done the damage in the building, is that right? Or did you not want to relay that? I totally forgot about that. No, there was none of, we didn't, we didn't relay want to do that. No, 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 we just, uh, no? okay. was, cool. Bahamut was um, talking about wanting yes. his stuff back and not seeing the guards on the door. That was cool. all. Cool, brilliant, okay. Um, so, yeah. to the cathedral then, I guess. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah. okay, cool, yeah. Uh, let me just bring up the new, I've got everything prepared. <laughs> so, eventually you stand outside the cathedral. Um, there's a shrine as well, and it's still being built. But you could probably imagine what the sh shrine eventually is going to look like. Um, they've converted this abandoned imperial, imperial cathedral into their headquarters, and they guard it closely. As you observe, Anyone that wishes to join up are directed to the man named Tybalt. There must be around 30 to 35 cultists milling about in this area. 
There's a lot of them. Um, and as you watch, people approach and uh, they they get pointed out to Tybal, and he's a man just in just but just by the entrance um, with a little um, he's got a little desk set up where he's taking people's names and things. And he seems to be a slender man with dark blonde hair, and he has an extensive Waterbringer-style skin plant that's just coating his body. And um, yeah, he's just he's chatting to one of the people that look like they're interested in signing up, and um, he shoots them away, just like no, no, not interested. Um, yeah, I'll approach. Mm, sure. Excuse me, my good man. Um, blessings upon you on this this most auspicious day. Um, mm, I'm, looking, I'm looking for a, ch a chap called Tybalt. I was told that he may be able to help me. Yes, I am Tybalt, uh, Chief Administratum Recruitum of the Waterbringers. And ah. he's, he, size, he sizes you all up as he's doing this. Uh, where are you all from? Oh me, I am actually from this, from just down the way. Um, right. I used to live with the now living saint Amora. Bless blessings upon her. Um, and I was told this morning, well, this morning that I, I could not return to my property for it was now a sanctuary uh, in honor of the living saint Amora. And yes, so well. I left and I returned because I thought, well, maybe I may not be able to, to sully consecrated ground, but maybe one of, one of your members may be able to. And unfortunately, when I returned, I found that the the cultists who had been sent to guard the building were no longer there. Hey. Uh, I was wondering if I could talk to someone about maybe uh, having an escort back to the property, and maybe they could go in and just retrieve some of my small personal effects. And then I would, of course, be on my way and, and, and allow the, the shrine to... Uh, the blessed Amora to remain uh, as, as sanct as it is. No, 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 no. This simply won't do. Um, we can't. Have, we can't have anyone entering the building. No, 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 no. This is a shrine. Everything in there will be sanctified. It must be as it is. From the moment she awoken as the living saint. No, 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 no. I won't have it. Um, but you guys seem like you're quite capable. I, I tell you what, I will allow you to become members of our cult, and then you may have an audience with the living saint herself. Um, you just have to do one thing for me first. Great hell, what is it? Well, I tell you what, there's a group here in town that's a real problem for us. Nasty folk they are. Um, hurt our members more than once, I can tell you. Some of them disappeared. They call themselves the Deluge. They doubt the saint's divinity openly. Disappear a few of them and you're in. Interesting. Yes, certainly. And um, how many is a few? Oh, just a handful. I don't doubt that between you two or three wouldn't be a problem. And in return for this... Would you be willing to then facilitate access to the building? Well, anyone of the cult may enter the building. It's a sanctuary for any of us. Oh, this is what I meant, you see. I do apologise, but, but would it not be possible to at least remove some of my effects no. from the building? No, simply not. N no, I won't have it. You may visit the building as a cult member, but no, no, you may not remove any effects. Quiet. And of the guards that were sent to protect the property, what, what is the process there? I assume with no one protecting it, it's going to be vulnerable now, because I do not live there. Word will soon get out that no one is protecting this sanctuary. And I am sure that if the Deluge have already made attempts 
at your members, then there's potential here for desecration to take place, at the very least. Surely would you... Is there not something we can do to stop that from happening? Uh, well, I took... I took... Um, I took responsibility for this shortcoming. Um, I sent some bumbling oafs that were relatively new to the building. I rest assured that the safety of the building is paramount now, and there are more than enough cultists. Our brothers, obviously, surrounding the building until we are there to uh, sanctify it correctly. Um, yes, I'm aware that the deluge had entered that building and desecrated it. Um, who else would it have been? So yes, do this favour for me. I will do a favour for you and allow you to uh, seek respite in the sanctuary. And um, maybe you can find peace within its walls. That's quite. Thank you very much. I will uh, bid you farewell and uh, how would you like me to inform you of my success? Bring me some trophies. Cloaks, robes, parts, I don't care which. Just um, bring me evidence and uh, we'll sign you up. I could do with some more capable men amongst the ranks of the Brotherhood. Consider it done. I shall return. Good. Praise be. Praise be. And I just back away. Cool. I, I, I'm going to imagine that you guys were in each shot of this and you heard everything. They're both quite loud characters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, the, the Deluge headquarters are at the desalinization station, so it, it, I imagine we're going to be heading there next. Yes. Um, Went to yeah, sure. Yep, go ahead. Are we actually going to go and murder this other cult, or are we going to acquire things in a less violent nature? You know, steal a few cloaks, maybe. I have no concern for the deluge. To be quite fair, the 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 group who have my eye are the water bringers. I have no interest in going around ravaging the countryside putting paid to this silly little warfare. Yes, so... I mean, you could just blast away in here now. In, 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 into where, old boy? Oh, into the cathedral. I mean, it, there does appear to be quite a crowd. 35 cultists outside. I can kill about 12 or 10, it's fine. Um, Probably bloody good. <laughs> I, I, I do not doubt your prowess, dear boy, but I don't believe we have authority to just go around murdering people en masse. This is probably true. Um, well, should we make way for this deluge headquarters and see if we can acquire some evidence? I'm a little bit concerned they want us to bring body parts. Well, he didn't, he didn't say body parts specifically. He said trophies. Um, cloaks, clothing. I think if we were to present a case with the deluge in a quite a sane and calm manner, we may be able to acquire these items without having to go on a rampage. Yes. I think we might even want to see the uh, deluge cults themselves and see uh, why they think they've run into such bad luck. And tell exactly. them about what the uh, what the water bringers are out trying to get their recruits doing. Exactly. Okay. If they're running into trouble, then perhaps we could help them, and in return, receive the trophies. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. um, and I might want to take a look around this cathedral. Ichabon, you might want to take a look around, see if uh, if we did try this place in the dead of night, whether we might get uh, get inside. Uh, I, I was going to say, yeah, this is probably the, I mean, infiltration for me is going to be my go-to method. However, um, I did already kind of um, plant a few seeds with the deluge anyway, so getting an audience with them might be not as tricky. Um, they might be more willing to speak with us. So, either or. Uh, I'm free. I'm easy. I'm, we're already here, so I'm kind of tempted to try our luck, just trying to get past a few things and see where she is within this place, but 
Yeah, it's down to you guys. Mm. All the um, windows around the building from where we are, are they just like solid stained glass or are they like opened windows? They are. They are, um, they're solid and they, they're, they're stained windows. Yeah. Okay. Um, they're, they're fairly high up as well. Um, so that they can try and catch the sun over the other lower buildings. Mm. Um, you can take you can take five minutes to look around the building. Yeah, I'll do you to just have a look? Just mostly because if we do end up in inside there, it'd probably be good to have an idea of how the hell we get out. Should we things go awry? Should we see if there are any other forms of exits, entrances into this building? Any way that we might. The shop. Make our way in. So yeah. there are a few I, uh, doors. There are a few doors. I'll, I'll give you this for free because. Yeah, it's, I it's, I'll, I'll offer it. Actually, he's helping. He said. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I'll give you this for free because walking around a building and seeing a door is not it's something not you need to roll for. <laughs> um, there are, as you can see in the picture, there are several side doors as well. This place is really heavily guarded. Like, mm. if. If what they believe is a living saint is in their cathedral, yeah. they ain't gonna let her go. go. No. <laughs> they ain't gonna let people in. So assume for now that you you can't find any way into this building apart from getting in through the front doors. That's fine. Um Right, should we head to Deluge then? There's at least a few ways out if we do somehow get trapped. The decentralization plot. Sounds wonderful. Uh, okay, bear with me. <laughs> this is uh, yeah, this is a bit more roundabout than I would have liked. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. Um, okay, so I don't, I don't have. Unfortunately, I don't have a, um, a setup for the decentralization plant. But um, you make your way to the decentralization plant, and. Um, so the Deluge headquarters appears to be a two-storey abandoned Ecclesiarchy watch station. Um, it's 50 metres long on each side and it stands next to the main desalinisation plant. Um, most of its original outer defences have been stripped for building materials, though the walls are still fortified and solid. Uh, the inside of the Deluge headquarters looks exactly like you would expect. It has personal quarters upstairs and business operations on the first floor. So as you approach, you can see you see that servitors and servo skulls are all flying around. Um, like they're, they're basically working like frantic bees. And you can see someone in the perimeter. And she looks like she could be the leader that, um, that Ichabon spotted earlier. And she's, she's toiling around desperately with trying to fix a part of the machine. Um, she's clearly an agent of the Mechanicus and she's really not dissimilar from Ichabon at all, apart from the fact that she's female and um, her mechadendrite is affixed to her back. And it's, it's slightly different, it works more on mechanics and repairs. And yeah, as I said earlier, the, there are various servo skulls and servitors and human workers, they're all milling about the place trying to fix things. And she's, she's just sat there, she's fiddling with this part, she's, she's just sort of mumbling to herself, she's like, blast it, not again. Oh, we seriously need those repair parts. Is there uh, something happy with? Oh, um... So I walk forward as I sort of like take one step forward. Sure, and she, she looks up and down and she's like, oh shit, it's another member of the Mechanicus. And she's like, are you here to help fix this pile of shit? Or maybe even deliver some parts we've asked for months ago? If not, I'm sorry, I really don't have the time for this. Ah. Uh, uh, not really exactly handy when it comes to repairs and, um... Well, I... Roll a tech test. A, uh, solutions. Um... Tech? Yeah, roll a tech test. See if you can help her out with what she's working on. Mm. Yeah, you've seen this part hundreds of times and you know exactly what's wrong with it. Yeah, see, here's your problem down here. You're looking too fine. <clears throat> Oh, oh. Spend some more time on the underside of the vehicle. Oh, for God's sake. Emperor, be praised. I've been 
pondering over this for, for hours and I just didn't think to look there. Uh, sorry, uh, my name's Zol. It's K-X-O-L. The K is silent. Uh, yeah, nice to meet you. I are my esteemed colleagues. Oh. <laughs> uh, and what are you guys doing here? And I point back to everyone who's probably... Uh, ...who uh, our latest acquaintance, Dan Hammond. He's kind of uh, the local around the area. We're sort of doing a few things around here. He, he could probably fill the best of what's going down. Right. Okay. And she's she's um she's taking quite an interest in you because she's not seen someone from the Mechanicus in a long time. Um, not of your stature, but like similar to hers, and she's she's kind of eyeing up your uh, mechadendrite greedily, like, hmm, that's a nice bit of kit. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bahadan is it? What can I do for you? Yes, well you see the uh, I'm having a slight trouble with uh, the the water bringers. Um, this new living saint, Amora, they have. She and I used to share a, a home with, and a shop, and were business partners. I find last night I returned home and the lights are off and the property is vacant and this morning the property was still vacant i assumed she'd just gone out to run some errands but i was confronted by two cultists of the water bringers who told me that she was now a living saint and that i was no longer welcome in my own home and as it was now a a sanctuary a consecrated ground that is going to be turned into some kind of tourist attraction. Um, this has led me into a conversation with a chap called uh, Tybald of the Waterbringers, who asks me to do something that I'm not inclined to do as a means of getting an audience with the living from Amora. And we were here to inquire as to whether or not there is something that we could do for you in return for a few trinkets to prove that we have conducted our mission so that we may be able to meet with this living saint Amora or at least get an audience with her. Because I believe that she's been taken against her will, you see. And I do not believe for one instance that the water bringers have a living saint. I believe that they have used the rules of having a living saint to put the deluge on the back foot and take the place for themselves. Right. It's all very convoluted, isn't it? Um, Quiet. Well, sure. I mean, I, yeah, we, we can... I can't lend you anyone to help you out, if that's what you're asking, but I can certainly give you some of our cloaks, I guess. Um, oh, that, that, that would be perfectly I mean, acceptable. I mean, I just wish we could get this bloody thing to work properly. We've spent days and days and days and we're waiting for repairs, but we've just had no luck. We, It's working at the slowest capacity we can. And I, I will turn to uh, Rob. Sorry, man, I didn't get your character's name. Ichabon. Uh, yeah, my, my name is Ichabon Sigma. Hmm. Echo one. So, uh, right. Sorry. Um, I don't know a great deal about repairing machines, but I assume that my friend Ikavon here may be of some use. Ikavon, would, would you? Is this something that you may be able to help with? That we could help you help with? I mean, absolutely. We can take a look at this. She. She seems sort of saying for sure. I'm. I'm. Mm, come here. Oh, okay. Uh, she seems. She seems nervous at the idea of inviting you in to look at this machine. Or oh, whether that's some kind of. Oh dear. 
Right. Hmm. Um, uh, look, I, I, I'm not. I'm not saying you can't help, and it. I, 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 I would appreciate it, but just don't judge, okay? Um, we've had to do some minor adjustments to the machine in order to get it even close to working. Uh, without the desalination plant, the people here would die of thirst. And she kind of leads you. She leads you over to the desalination plant, and but. You also notice that she summoned her servo skulls and servitors and a few of the workers to come closer and follow. And it seems oddly threatening. She hovers nervously in the entrance with a glum smile, as behind her the servo skulls and the servitors await her command. Though truthfully, they all look tired, worn and overworked. None of them could really be much of a fight to you guys. She seems like she's on, on edge as you all peer inside of this building. Uh, Ikavon, make me a tech test, please. Yeah, as I, as I see this demeanor shift up as they're getting close here, we're like, yeah, no, we, we came in intentions today. Uh, we're out to, uh, we, we've got someone else in our crosshairs at the minute, so we're not looking to cause anything. You guys are trying to get water to your people, and hey, they need that. So, um, I'm all up for getting this thing running and getting everything here smooth, smoothly done as smoothly as possible. So, um, our, let's just have a little look and let's just see what's the situation. Jesus! Everything appears to be fine. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow, with that roll, okay, okay, this is what happens, okay. You can see very clearly that she has heavily modified this desalinization equipment with Xenos Tech. This is a clear case of tech heresy. Truthfully, to be able to do this must have taken a great amount of genius to get it going to begin with. But if, tech, if the tech priests of Avacaris caught wind of this, they would have her killed and her equipment destroyed. It goes against your former teachings on Mars, though that was a long time ago. How you respond to this is entirely up to you. Is this the same kind of stuff? Because we've got the, the... I can't remember the god's name, but it's basically the machine god stuff, right? Uh, yeah, you've got a Necron uh, piece of Necron equipment in your... Um, a, piece of, yeah, a piece of Necron equipment in your um, uh, ship. But yeah, if, if you were found with that, you'd probably be done, killed for treason as well. Um, this, this looks like similar tech. Yeah. Okay. And um, she's crudely affixed it to the desalinization plant to try and get water. And you can see, you can see, she's actually done a genius job. But this is, goes against everything that your kind stands for. Everything. It's heresy. Absolute heresy. Yeah, but it, it, it's entirely up to you because obviously now you've embraced. Yeah, because it might blind fight it. But it's, it's taking you right off guard. You did not expect to see this. Yeah, because yeah, one of the things, the, one of the rules is... is they accept machinery up. So he's like all about getting the machine. He, he doesn't figure the machine all the way. Basically what this is as well, right? This crosses... Yeah, uh, yeah. To, to you and to your teachings, um, you're only meant to really use the equipment and tools and teachings that were given to you um, that's been approved by the machine cult, basically, um, the Omnisire, which is the, um, the ever-present machine, machine spirit. Um, to use tech from another race is just, is almost unheard of. It, yeah, it's just, it's, yeah. But, I mean, she seems to, yeah. she seems to be using it for the, the good of the people of this planet, of, of this, this um, community. So, yeah, it's a real grey area for you, mate. <laughs> yeah. Well, now if anyone else saw what I was looking at right now, this would be a very different discussion. Right, um, well, but thank you. 
you see, you see her um, her servants. They they all back off and go back to work. Um. um yeah. Uh, my first bit of feedback. Thing around it that isn't so obviously. Oh, yeah, no. Sorry, Robert. Are you keep. Well, we so, up. on I, first I, glance, I, it doesn't... I keep getting bits, bits of... Is, there, is that just me, or is that... No, no, no. No, the, yeah, you keep... Uh, oh, up. oh, sorry, mate. Oh, sorry. Is it a volume thing, or is it... A... It's just intermittent, so... Okay. Like, it might be signals. Is it signal My mic, in general. Maybe. I, I've gone as... I've gone longer to the mic, so hopefully. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm just like... Um, you've done what you need to help these people, and you've embraced technology from the universe, not just a single slice of it. Okay, well thank you. Um, um, maybe between us, once this is all over, you can come which back and I help think me fix this. And, um, no. technology is going the other way. I feel like we're missing a grand, a grand uh, sentence here. <laughs> grand paragraph. Yeah. <laughs> that. We'll, we'll have to pretend you said something really inspiring, Sorry. Rob. You, you help us. <laughs> yeah, it's like every other word, Rob. I don't know how much you can hear of us. Yeah. Oh, shit, am I all right? Yeah, it's like proper. I, th I think it might be your connection um, cutting in and out. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. If we all turn... I'll tell you what, all turn your um, thingies off. Cameras. Uh, cameras off. It might help the feed. We don't just need to look at your beautiful faces. And hopefully that will help him with his bandwidth. Mm. I see. Is is this like I'm I'm just testing out with my mic now? But yeah. Yeah, that's better. That was good. Yeah, that was loads better. Um, I don't know if that's helpful. Yeah. Yeah, that's loads better. All right. Well, I'll try this for now. Yeah. See. Cool. Okay. So she, she's really. All right. Really I basically. Prepared. Go ahead, mate. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, my I basically you said um oh, I'll just do it again, seeing as it's recorded put it anyway but I'll just be like here um I like what you've done you need to obviously shield it a little bit more maybe yeah, is, it, is it still breaking up or? yeah it's still breaking up <laughs> oh, fuck it go sit by your router <laughs> yeah apparently it's alright, it's okay. I get, I get the gist. You're, you're, you're fully on board with what she's all right, doing. No worries, yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, she She's really grateful for this and um, she hands you some robes and says, look, I can't really give you too much. I don't really have much at all, but here are some robes from, from just from, from our storage. Hopefully this will get you the audience that you seek. Um, but I will take you up on your offer of fixing this when you get back. I was worried that I couldn't really get anyone to help me with this because of the nature of the of the modifications that I've done, and um, yeah, I could really use some help. So yeah, there you go. You've got some robes, and I take it you're uh, going to make your way back to the church. <laughs>